السلام علیکم اینڈ ویلکم بیک ٹو سفر مقدس این ہرمین کے ساتھ بفور وی اسٹارٹ اگین آئی وی جسٹ ون مینشن دیر از ٹو نمبرز آن دا اسکرین ایف یو وانٹ ٹو ٹاک وتھ اس کال دا فرسٹ نمبر اینڈ ایف یو ووڈ لائک ٹو ٹیکسٹ اینڈ واٹس ایپ اے کوشچن پلیز سینڈ اٹ فریلی آن ٹو ون ٹو تھری ایٹ Before the break, uh, we were talking about uh, some issues that have been going on in the market for a while, some of the scams. Uh, but uh, I want to move on to a very current issue that has recently started. Uh, there is some construction going on around uh, Haram. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of the people would like to know that uh, how will this affect them if they go for Umrah in the upcoming weeks or how long will this thing last? Uh, the, what they are saying about six months is construction. Now what I hear that uh, when, if you want to go inside close to Haram, you have to be in a Haram. Only you can go for Umrah. All the other, like a lot of people when they go, They like to do, make a lot of tawaf. So I think you, can, you don't have this privilege to do a lot of tawaf. So, but when you go for Umrah and then come back, uh, come out and just do the prayer, a lot of prayer with us. So currently, if somebody wants to go for Umrah, one of the current issues they will face will be uh, they would only be able to enter the close portion, like close to the Kaaba to do tawaf, only if they're in Ahram. Yeah. But uh, will they still have the options to do the tawaf from yeah, like uh, there's a couple of floors, so will yeah. they still be able to do that? Or? Yeah, uh, they have an option. They can go on the first floor, but mm -hmm. it's longer, you can do tawaf over there. So the, it doesn't cause uh, too much of a disturbance. Uh, it, it, it's affecting people mostly that are trying to do a lot of tawaf when they're over there. Exactly. Because yeah. uh, the space is limited. Yeah. So if you want to go close to the Kaaba and do tawaf, you need to be prepared to only go once or every time you go, you're just going for Umrah when you go into Haram. Exactly. Okay, so, yeah. but the option to do it uh, from uh, the first, second, oh, third, yeah. fourth. A lot of people like to do Tawaf and you can go as a pleasant walk. You go night time mm -hmm. uh, after Fajr. You can do the Tawaf in, uh, it takes about 10 minutes to do one. <laughs> so, so you're looking so at about, about an hour, 10 about minutes. One hour, 10 minutes, you can do the Tawaf. Okay. How is this affecting uh, the travelers globally going for Umrah? Is it, is it decreasing the amount or the same amount of people are still going? The well, same amount of people is still going. But and the and Saudi government, have they done anything to actually stop the flow a little bit? Uh, it's not in my knowledge yet, but I think uh, Saudi government is doing whatever the best they can do for the people as they have been doing it. <laughs> no, no, but did they do anything to decrease the amount of people going? Are they, are they implying yeah, they, some rules? Yeah, they do maybe? something, yeah, the new rules that if you have traveled in the last two years, they're putting a 2,000 real mm -hmm. uh, extra, you have to pay Ministry of Hajj. So with a lot of people, they wanted to go continuous going, so they cannot do, a lot of people cannot pay, which is equal to about $535, so, plus the agent service. So the Umrah visa will cost you about $700 if you are repeating in two years. So basically, uh, it's kind of like uh, a luxury to go again now. It's yes, uh, the expenses yeah, yeah. going up per person by $540. Because uh, we have heard about this in the past and uh, we would like all our viewers to know that uh, if you have been to Umrah, uh, give your, what kind of information do you need to check? If uh, uh, I need the passport number, and nationality, we can check that if they are eligible for without fees or they have to pay 2,000 real extra. We can check it in the system. Basically, if they have mm -hmm. traveled in Islamic calendar in 1438, mm -hmm. and this is 1439, then they have to, they must pay the extra service. So if you want to go again, basically you have to pay and uh, that's, that's how the system is working. That's, that's it, yeah. Okay, uh, we have one question on uh, WhatsApp. And uh, the question basically is, does this rule also apply for Hajj or is this just for Umrah? See, every time the Saudi government change rules and regulation, if you're asking question about Hajj, last year, 
Hajj two, uh, 2017 or 1438. Uh, those people, they went in last three years, they have to pay 2,000 real extra. So okay. we don't know in the coming Hajj uh, what the rule going to apply, but it's uh, definitely three years. If you have traveled for Hajj in three years, then you have to pay even as if we do our visa again, we have to pay that 2,000 real. So this is something that uh, somebody can understand. So I just want to mention, uh, if you are looking to find out if you have to pay again, uh, you can call Anu Harman's office, 718-505-0705. Uh, uh, you have to provide with uh, the nationality uh, and your passport number. And uh, they can let you know if the extra fees apply to you. And as Mr. Samyuddin has mentioned, that if you have traveled in the year uh, 1438 yeah. or 39, you have to pay these fees. But uh, if you haven't traveled in these days, then uh, you are fine. And the Islamic calendar does work a little different than uh, the Georgian calendar, which is commonly used. So yes. a good way you could do this is uh, if you know when Hajj is coming around, you could tell, you know, if you've been after Hajj of 2016, Yes. Approximately, yeah. Hajj, after Hajj of 2016, which was 2016 uh, August? 1437, 38, 39, yeah, something like that. So, 2016, but just to confirm, you would like to have your uh, passport number in handy and your nationality, and Anil Harman can check it for you and uh, let you know. Again, the number is 718-505-0705. Mm. So th is this is this an issue that is uh, affecting affecting people or people are still going? The five hundred forty dollars really? Is I, I I don't think so. It's affecting those people. They want to go, they go. I, we have a just uh, process one family, mm -hmm. three people paid extra. So instead of just for visa and transportation, they are supposed to pay seventeen hundred. They end up paying thirty two hundred. So I don't think those people they want to go. Mm, the, uh, they will go, inshallah. They will go, inshallah. Uh, we have uh, another question on messages. Uh, basically, one of our viewers is asking if uh, if you repeat if you repeat the same. Let's say you paid the five hundred forty dollars. Let's say they went last year and uh, they go in January, and uh, they basically want to go again in April. Will they have to pay it both oh. times? They have to pay both times. As many times they go, uh, it used to be there was a rule for Hajj, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. In five years, you cannot repeat the Hajj. So it was difficult to stop Hajj. So they made the rule that in three years, you will pay the penalty, you go. You don't have, I mean, no restriction. For the same thing like Umrah. If you keep wanted to go, you want to go in a season every month, every month you pay $540. Okay, uh, once again, I want to mention that uh, if anybody is interested in uh, finding out more information or uh, if they want to just text us, just common question, if they think others should know, please uh, message it to us or give us a call in. And uh, even though we're doing this segment in English, uh, all questions are welcomed in Urdu as well. So if you feel more comfortable with Urdu, please ask us and uh, we will answer all your questions in uh, whatever language you prefer. So, uh, being still on the lines of this uh, extra fees, uh, do you see do you see these fees uh, going away anytime soon, or uh, this is something that's unpredictable? It's unpredictable. Like when when they started last year, all the Umrah people, they, if they went to Umrah for last three years, they have to pay extra fees. Then all of a sudden they change now. Three years is too much because everybody is repeating Umrah. So they made a rule for one year. When this season is started, the one year rule, nobody was coming with the extra payment. We did the first month more than 100 visa, and we have about 70 people who did the Umrah last year. So the, they were noticing that the, everybody coming without the payment. So they needed money to uh, do some haram project, what, what I heard from some people. So. This is the one way they can collect the money and uh, continue their uh, construction and finish it. 
Okay, so the the money does go towards uh, possibly goes towards some of the projects yes. uh, that are happening for Haram. Yeah. Uh, as everybody knows that they have no donation box over there, so okay. there's nobody there collecting money from you. So uh, there's a possibility that yeah. this money might be going. So yeah, they are thinking that if people can afford to go second time, they must have money. That's why they're going. <laughs> so they wanted to put a burden on those people. They are repeating the first timers. Uh, they they don't have to pay the extra. So obviously. That makes sense. Okay. Uh, I want to go back to your uh, packages. Maybe uh, you want to talk a little bit more about uh, the January package and, uh, you know, what what is this package? Because uh, we already mentioned in previous episodes that this is a very economical package. So uh, I just uh, we just want to ask you that uh, how does this package work? Who is this package actually made for? Um, and this package uh, basically designed for a student because New York area, all most of the colleges, CUNY, SUNY, they are off in January, and a lot of SUNY students are requesting that their school is started after 15th of January. So we went to the uh, change the date from. 3rd mm -hmm. to 13 January, so they can come in the package because we have a lot few students come last year and they say if the package will come early, we will go, but uh, they could not go in the last year. So they, a lot of people are registering. That package is very popular, mashallah. That's actually this package called a student package. So it's uh, specifically uh, meant for, for young students style. to go, young, young, young people style, to go. Young style. But uh, is there... Uh, is there a problem if non-students go, or this is... Uh... No, no, this is not a problem. Not anybody can go. Only the mm -hmm. name of the package is a student package. It's because the time it's offered in, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's the availability is for a lot of the students yes, yes, going yes, to uh, city colleges or state colleges or even private colleges. Yes. Most of the schools, they, they start up again mm -hmm. around uh, 16th, 17th of January. Yes. So these are convenient dates for students, while not putting the burden of December on them, yeah, which is yeah, a very yeah. expensive package, yeah. and uh, still keeping everything, the prices under control, and offering something. Uh, yeah, bad, we're using students. better hotels in this package as well. We are uh, next to the Haram, uh, Makkah, Medina, both places. Yeah, that's good. That's, mm. uh, that's something that should help out. Uh, so, and uh, getting back to the December, uh, just, uh, we just want to talk to you a little bit more about uh, what are some of the services you offer which, uh, you know, help out clients with families and uh, somewhere along those lines. This groups we are making, we are especially, uh, we take them a lot of different places, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, a lot of other groups, they don't take it. Like in uh, Medina, we take, try to take the museum as well, in Makkah also. <laughs> Plus Ziyarat, and we take a museum, uh, Khiswa Museum, so which is a, a extra thing in the group. Uh, a lot of people only take it for general uh, Ziyarat. So uh, in Medina, you're trying to cover uh, exhibitions and museums, uh, which are extra Ziyarat. Yes, exactly. And uh, in Makkah, you're covering uh, Khiswa and yeah. uh, the architectural museum uh, with uh, some old artifacts from Haram. Yeah, yeah. And uh, in the last episode, uh, you mentioned uh, something about, you know, if the family is large and uh, how you would work with them to, so they could save a little bit of money on one yeah, of Obviously, family. if it's a family of five, so we give them a break okay. with the fifth one, only the visa and tickets. And then we buy a package for quad. You can accommodate in a quad room. So we help it out, and that's fun too, yeah. Okay, uh, we have a caller. No, I think the line went off. So uh, let's continue the conversation. So basically, if a large family is going, let's just say uh, five people, so you would be able to accommodate them if the kids are young, obviously, because yeah. uh, if they're old enough, they need their own bed to sleep. Yes. So you would be able to accommodate them uh, a little bit by giving them one room and saving them a little bit of money. So yeah. to, uh, whatever you can do to make it a little bit in the more affordability range. Yes, we can, we can do that. 
So uh, this is something you're doing to keep it affordable for larger families. Yes, we have a uh, group coming up in December 20. We have a two family. They are party of five, so mm -hmm. we are giving them. So it works out well. So if it's a family yeah. of five, it works out yeah. uh, in their favor yeah. for this. Uh, we will be taking another break, inshallah, and uh, we will see you soon right after the break.